Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about how to create a painterly look with Redshift. Theo is going to show you how to build this shader from scratch so you can start creating your own masterpieces. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. All right, so today we're talking about painting with Redshift. Not actually painting, but creating a shader that mimics the painterly 3D effect over any model. I'm going to walk you through how to build this from scratch. So we'll go through the whole process. This shader was developed alongside our new shader pack, YMA Painterly. If you're interested in learning more about this pack, we'll drop a Gumroad link down below. Okay, so we're going to start from scratch on this one. Essentially, I have a three-point lighting setup just to hit this object, and I'm using the new open PBR material setup. You could use the standard, but that's going to be deprecated fairly soon, so I just recommend people getting used to using this new open PBR material. So the first thing you need is some form of texture. So I've created a whole bunch of textures that I've included in a pack that I'll talk about in a bit, but basically it's just a whole bunch of different paint strokes that have just been set up and tileable. Um, this was 4K and it's tileable and I created this in Substance Painter. You can use Photoshop, you can use Rebel, you can mix and match. Um, I actually made these paint strokes in Rebel, brought them into Substance and sort of created this tileable sort of look. So I'm just going to take that texture and drag it in. Just solo that so you can see what that looks like over our object. Instead of uh, setting to auto, I'm actually going to set this to raw so I get as much information as possible. It's just going to be more linear, the full color gamut. And now how to get this texture to affect the bump. Now, most people may think that you just go I'm pressing shift C and just you set up a bump map and you'd feed this in and you feed that into your bump and you get this look. Now that's using the height. We want to use the object space and you can see it's sort of working already. If you were to make this a little weaker, you would sort of get that look already, but it isn't as comprehensive and mathematically correct as it could be. But if you really wanted something just really quick, dirty and simple, you're like, ah, it's good enough. This could be your solve. But we want to do something a bit more fancy, a little bit more technical, and a little bit more intricate. So I'm going to just get rid of that, and we'll just go back to here. And what we're going to do is just a few different operations that will sort of give us the normals of our object, and then we'll feed this in to the normals. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a state node. So I'm just pressing shift C and typing in state. So if I solo this, you see, you get these, these sort of colors, and this is the world space as the transform tells you right here. So what we actually want is the object space. So now it's RGB based on the object itself. From there, we want to do a vector change range. And all we're doing is linking the normal to the input. And you'll see nothing's changed because we're still at the zero to ones. We need to change this to negative one. So now we're negative one to positive one of the whole setup. Next, it's, talk, it's how do we add these two together? Well, it's going to be some math nodes. So this one is called a pow, power. So, you know, you could just think of this as, you know, powers of two, powers of three, and things of that nature, just in math. So we're going to change the base to be two. And our exponent is going to be sort of our control. So we can leave that to one for right now, but that's sort of the thing that will create like it's stronger or weaker. And then next we need a vector power. So vector power. And much like the power, the, the difference is that you just get the X, Y, Z. And the whole idea is we're going to connect this power to the base. And the exponent will actually be our texture. So if I bring in our texture and just put it into the exponent, you'll see you get this. So you can see it's really, really faint, but you can see you're getting some of that color from the texture. Now we can combine these two together. So we'll add another vector power. 
and I'm going to take the base from the top and the exponent from this and then put those together. And you can now see we've linked together this texture with the actual transform normals from the object. This power that we had down below, remember where I just had to one. If I set that to two, three, or five, you can start to see you get more and more of that effect. So that's what's going to control sort of the strength of it. Now that we have this, the only thing we need to do is sort of normalize. And this is just a safety precaution to make sure we don't go in and out of uh, the proper range. So I'm just going to do shift C again, and go vector mm -hmm. change range again. And all we're doing now with this one is we're changing the new range to negative one one so we get the full range properly and it may not look different but sometimes it does update and it will look like this that's totally fine and now what we want to do is a normalize and this is basically just to make sure we're in range properly so with that we have our entire setup and now we can add in the bump map. So if I add a bump, and I'm just gonna link this together. And instead of height field, I'm gonna say object space, because remember, we changed it to object over here. And now we can feed this into our bump. And we will get sort of this very, very faint look but again, remember down below, we added in this exponent component. So as I increase this, you'll get more and more and more of that look. And the idea with this now is to set up a color. Something a little richer. There we go. And we have this look. The last thing to do on the bump is actually the normals. Make sure that they're unbiased. And you can see immediately once I click that on, how much of a difference that made. If I kept that off, you get a bit of this, but unbiased normals will start to make that pop a bit more. And now this control down below, as I said before, if that was zero, you would just get your regular normals that you get from your object. And as you increase this number, it becomes more and more distorted painterly normals. And again, if you disconnect it, it's just your standard and that's what you get. So again, that's the whole setup. Just takes a few minutes to connect and you can sort of see the power of it all. Once you're, you're happy with that, you can sort of minimize, hide things, group it, rename it, do what you will with it and that will give you sort of the maximum amount of control. So now that we've built the basic paint shader, if you're interested in a more advanced setup with custom nodes for color and procedural stop motion animation, we've created a new shader pack called YMA Painterly. Here's a small taste of what you can do with it. going to do it for this one. Hopefully it's been helpful in understanding how to create your own base painterly setup with a way to modify the normals procedurally. If you'd like to check out our in-depth YMA painterly pack, check out the link below or visit yumi.academy. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.